Welcome back, everyone! This is Gerenitis bringing you Feed the Beast 1710. Today we are starting on episode 30, the Big 3 0. And today we are going to be building a Enderman farm because I'm going to need a lot of Ender Pearls for what I'm going to be doing next episode. So, this episode we need to build something that's going to get me lots of Endermen. All right? For that purpose, uh, now we've already covered uh, powered spawners, okay? We can do that. We've done that. It's not a thing. We don't really care. It's not even a big deal anymore, okay? One of the things I do want to do is show you a different way to spawn monsters, okay? So let's see. How many of these capacitors do I have laying around? I have no... Oh, wait. Oh, oh wow. I have five octatics. That's actually incredibly fortunate. I actually thought I meant to make some of these in between episodes, uh, and that way I'd have them prepared and I wouldn't have to spend time making them, but now I already have them, so yay. We're going to be making a vibrant capacitor bank. Now, vibrant crystal, vibrant alloy nuggets around an emerald. How are we doing on emeralds anyway? Up to 35. Excellent. Uh, which, by the way, um, wow, that chest is getting kind of full. That's rather impressive, actually. Uh, I went ahead and, and when I got the hopper down here, I went ahead and put an item conduit pumping anything that goes from down there uh, up into here so I don't have to go down there and check anymore. It just gets pumped straight in right here. That's awesome. Oh, cool, and I've got lots of extra coal. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and there we go. Oh, hey, <laughs> I can keep that going now. Sweet. All right, so anyway, that takes care of that. Um, what was I saying? I was doing something. We're making a vibrant capacitor bank, I believe. Vibrant Capacitor Bank can hold 25 million RF, by the way. And, oh, that's right. We need four electrical steel and a Vibrant Crystal. And the ores and ingots, which is also starting to get full. Ooh, we're going to have to do something about this. Do I have any electrical steel? I have six. Excellent. I have just enough. And I have four Vibrant Nuggets. I need eight in total. So let's take one of these Vibrant Alloys, break it down. And now we should be able to go ahead and make ourselves a Vibrant Capacitor. And there we go. Excellent. Isn't that wonderful? All right, so now we have a vibrant capacitor. That is going to be useful. Uh, we're going to be basically adding this to the nether farm. Uh, I already have an automated killer down there that has fortune on it. So I'm just going to be adding this to the nether farm. So I want to go ahead and put as much stuff together here in the overworld as I can. Uh, and then forget something critical and therefore have to travel back and forth between dimensions even though I don't really want to. Okay, uh, actually it's getting to be nighttime outside, so let's go ahead and make the first thing we need right now. I am going to want a safari net. Uh, specifically, a reusable safari net. And that's going to require four ender pearls and a gas tier. Ironic, considering I'm trying to get more ender pearls, but I guess as they say... You gotta spend money to make money, or in this case, you gotta spend ender pearls to make ender pearls. All right, so we have ourselves a safari net. Now, for those of you who are familiar, a safari net kind of gives away what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, the safari net is used; it's essentially a pokeball, and we're basically gonna go out here. We're gonna try to find ourselves an enderman, and we're going to right-click the enderman with this, and it is going to capture him in the safari net. And then once we have him captured, he will be useful to help spawn more. And we'll get into that here in just a few minutes. Give me just a second to find an Enderman and catch him. And we'll be right... Ah! No, I may not need to be right back. I see an Enderman on the radar. No! Why are you teleporting away? Get back here. Oh yeah, three Endermen. No, no, no. You're holding a block. I don't want you holding a block. Did I... Ah, oh, crap. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Hi. No. What are you doing? Get. Okay. Come here. Yeah. There we go. One Enderman. Whoa. Hi, guys. Excuse me. I don't like capturing Endermen that are holding blocks. I find that irritating. All right. So sweet. That went a lot easier than I thought it would. That was supposed to take a lot longer. So yay. All right, sweet. 
So now that we have an Enderman captured, well, now we need to do something with said Enderman. I can't believe that went that well. I should have killed the other Endermen that were standing by just because. But I, I just, yeah, that was too good to pass up. Actually, I don't need you in my inventory, or you in my inventory, or you in my inventory, or you in my inventory. So yay, moving on. All right, all right or you either. All right, cool. So what we want to use the Safari Net for is a powered spawner. Okay. Uh, not a not a powered spawner, an auto spawner. We're not doing powered spawners. We already did powered spawners. We're going to use something new. And this is the auto spawner from Mine Factory Reloaded. Okay. To make one of these, we're going to need some more emeralds, some magma creams, a basic machine frame, redstone reception coil. We should have pretty much all of this stuff handy. Let's see what we have in machine parts. Um... I have the plastic. That's about all I've got. Wow, I really thought... Well, I got lucky with the octatic capacitors, so I guess I shouldn't complain too much, right? So let's run outside here real quick and grab a little bit of nether wart, if I can get... Really, guys? One nether wart... Do I have, oh, two magma creams. I think it was two magma creams. Yep, two magma creams, two that. Okay, two emeralds, a reception coil, and a machine frame basic. So, two emeralds. We had the machine coil, didn't we? No, we sure didn't. That's just redstone and gold. Two redstone and some gold. Reception coil, right? Yes, cool. So that means that all we need is a machine frame, which is going to be iron, glass, and a tin gear. Also, nothing we can't handle. Let's see, four pieces of iron. Actually, you know what? I'm just not even going to go there because I've got plenty of this stuff and I don't mind using it. So let's see. We're going to be using a lot of these things at some point in time anyway, so. No, I. That gummit. There we go. There, now we have plenty of extra gears. And now we just need some glass. And we should be able to make a bunch of excess machine frames. Because we are going to be using a bunch of these. Just trust me on that one. So let's see. Let's take... Well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and make it. Alright. One auto spawner. Alright, cool. So the auto spawner is going to be what is going to spawn our Enderman. Okay, so we're going to use the Safari Net in the powered in the auto spawner, not powered spawner, to spawn our Enderman. Now, the auto spawner runs on RF and also needs mob essence. Okay. Mob essence is gotten from uh, grinding enemies. So my factory reloaded has a block called the grinder. Okay? And you supply the grinder with power, and it kills monsters and gives you their drops, and it also gives you mob essence. Okay, so you need a mob farm to get mob essence to use the auto spawner that makes a mob farm. I personally don't think that's the greatest way to go about this. So instead, we're going to be using, um, is it the sewer? I'm not sure if it's the sewer. Um, I'm wanting to say it's a sewer. Let's just look it up. It, I think it is the sewer. No, no, no. Give me just a second. I, I, I'm thinking it's the sewer, but then again, maybe it's not. Let me, let me look this up real quick. Hang on. Yeah, I was right. It was the sewer. I, I really thought it was, but, you know, I, I doubt myself, so, you know, eh. It's the sewer. So, yay! We got extra sewers. Four sewers per uh, thing. I actually only need one, so, yay. Let's see, we should be able to toss these excess items in here. And so, let's see. We got that. We got this. With the sewer, we're going to need... Uh, wait a minute. Machine parts, I'm going to need some of the fluid ducts. Pressurize, only seven. That's not going to be enough. We're going to have to make some more of these. So let's see. Uh, 
pressurized fluid conduits. Let's see. Okay, it's just fused quartz. Is that in here as well? E. Do I not have any more fused quartz? Ugh. Um, do I have okay, good. We've got we've got more quartz. We're gonna have to go to the nether and get some more quartz at some point. Uh but yeah, it should be fine. Conduit binders? Seriously, we're out of conduit binders too? Are we really going down this road? Fine. Gravel, sand, clay, sand. I don't have any gravel anymore, do I? And we're running out of clay. Hmm. Well, this could be bad. Let's see. Gravel, double compressed. How about some just normal single compressed compressed gravel? Thank you. Alright, so let's see. I, interesting, I'm running out of everything. That actually will make me quite a bit of this stuff, so that'll be fine. And go. And this should show up here rather quickly, so awesome. And the fused course as well. So... Yeah, that should do. 39 should be enough, I think. Yeah, that should be enough. Alright, so now that we've got that, we're also going to need a couple of drums. So let's see. Yeah, yeah, we're going to use drums, because I want to. And because I have all kinds of iron, and I don't mind wasting it at this point. So let's see, we'll make two drums... And the reason I'm making two drums, well, I'll explain it later, because I actually, there's a conversion that I'm going to be doing, and I don't know the actual conversion rate of this, so I want two drums just to be safe. Yeah, I, realistically, I probably should use three drums just to be really safe, but, you know, well, we're not going to get too far into that. So let's see. Got the sewer, got the XP drum, got the normal drums, got the capacitor bank. We're going to need, let's see... Actually, we're going to need some redstone conduit. Got it. Uh, item conduit? Uh, might need a little bit of that. We're going to go out there with, like, everything. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to think of everything I could possibly need. And inevitably, I will forget something because I'm me. But that's okay. Let's see. Barrels... I know I'm forgetting something, but I just don't know what. Let's toss this stuff in the auto sort chest because I don't need it with me anymore. That cleans up the inventory a bit. So let's see. Ah, we're going to need a couple of levers. Oh, levers, machine parts. Two, eh, let's bring four. It'll be extras, that's okay. Oh, that's right. With the other, I'm going to need a, um, what do they call that? It's a experience shower. There we go, an XP shower, obsidian and three iron. That's okay, I can manage that. I knew I was forgetting something. And now that I've got this, I have got everything I could possibly need, and there's no way I'm forgetting anything else. Just remember I said that here in a few minutes when I'm going, Daggum, and I forgot this. Okay, now I think we might need a uh, open blocks tank to use the experience shower with. Uh, so let's go ahead and make one of those just in case. And that's going to be some more obsidian and some glass panes. Which we have plenty of. And then we can go over into the nether and get this thing assembled and see if we can't get it working. Oh, I forgot something else. I know, I didn't get to the nether before I said I forgot it. I'm, I'm losing my touch. All right, um, I need an... Well, actually, no, I can do it that way. 
I, I can work with this. Yeah, yeah, I can work with this. All right, so let's head over to the nether, and we'll get this thing put together. See you there. All righty, we're here in the nether, and the first thing I want to do is, by the way, since I've gotten here, my uh, capacitor bank is being charged by my wireless charger. Uh, I've gone ahead and turned off the spawner for the moment, but I want to go ahead and place this in the power line. Actually, I need my wrench for that. Yeah, right there seems like a good enough spot. Put that in right there, and we will see that it is draining an ungodly large amount of power. There we go. Filled up the lines. We are now generating 400 RF per tick from these guys. So, awesome. These guys are now running full blast as fast as they possibly can. It'll take a while before this catches up. Realistically, this is just going to, with the spawner, one of the spawners running, this should continue to build. Uh, right now, I'm just letting it... Why are we suddenly losing power? That was kind of strange. Huh. I don't know. Anyway, while we're going ahead and setting up the other stuff, I'm going to let this go ahead and be filling itself. All right, so the first thing we want to do is start converting our... Uh, we need to start making our uh, mob essence, okay? So we're going to go ahead and put the sewer right here. Okay, above the sewer, now actually that's a good question. Let's find out if this is even going to work. Because I'm not sure if we can actually attach this to the drum. Ah, dude, it does work. Awesome. So I don't need the, uh... Stop. Excellent. Generating mob essence. Nice. Okay, so that's going to work quite nicely. Let's actually move this down one. That way we don't have to have a question as to whether or not it's going to fall out of place. All right, so we'll put this right here. No, 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 no. Okay, we're going to have to... All right, well, we know it's going to work. Let's put the other part in first. All right, so we're going to use the liquid conduits. And we're going to put them right here. That is automatically exporting the mob essence. Excellent. Now, because I don't know what the conversion rate is, I'm using two drums to the one drum of experience because, you know, better safe and all that. Now, let's see. One of the things I want to do is actually have this not attached there, please. And we're going to run this underneath. And we're already out. We're already out. Good. So let's go ahead and put this in. Actually, we should, should be able to just put it in right there. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that works. All right. So, yeah, it's generating mob essence and being pumped out as fast as it can be. So we're taking a full drum of experience, pumping it onto that. Now, the question is, how many will it fill both of these drums and have experience left over? Well, that's what we're going to find out, isn't it? All right, so we're going to go ahead and hook these two up, and we're going to go ahead and run the liquid conduit along the ceiling right here. All right, and we're going to go ahead and tell these that they're going to be extracting. Always active. Same with this one. Always active on extract. Okay, so now we're pumping uh, essence up there. And let's see if we can get one more piece, right? Why didn't that connect? Oh, because I'm a doofus and I shouldn't have started pumping stuff into that yet. Because now i got to try to make this click. Okay, we'll just do it from up top. All right, so let's go upstairs, and since that's all doing its conversion, let's go ahead and hop in here. Thankfully, I turned this off, because otherwise this could be a horrible mess. And let's see. Okay, we're coming in from that side over there. So now I should be able to do this click without having to do all the jumping. 
Okay, fine. Let's just do fluid conduits, please. There we go. That's better. All right, so now we should be able to go ahead and bring the fluid conduit. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and put the powered spawner in front, I think. Uh, you know, beside would actually probably be better. Let's just put it beside it. And the one piece of power conduit that we took from downstairs to put in the uh, spawner, uh, to put in the energy, uh, the capacitor bank. That thing. You know, the thing. The thing with the stuff. Anyway, don't ask. I can't talk tonight. All right, so now this should be, indeed, we are getting full of energy and essence, and we can now go ahead and put the thing in here. Now, what we need to do past this is go ahead and run a little bit of this redstone conduit. Okay, now we should be able to put that there, and that's going to connect that as well. Okay, we spawned our first enderman. Excuse me, I need to take that back out. And... I need to catch one of you new Endermen in a soul vial. Stand still. Good boy. All right, so now we can add this to the number of things being attracted. And now, hopefully... Really, dude? You're, you just happen to be standing at the one little section that this thing doesn't reach? Come on, move. What the... What did you do? No! Oh, don't tell me this doesn't work. The attractor obelisk doesn't work on Enderman? No, couldn't be. Well, this could throw a complete knot in all of my plans. Let's see what happens. Come on. Come on, you're supposed to walk thing. It's supposed to attract you. You're not being attracted. This is not working. All right, let me give this a minute and see what happens here. They're supposed to just go this way. So give me just a second. Well, the one guy just happened to randomly walk off. But let me let me see how this is going to work out. Be right back. Alrighty, well, that was fun. Uh, so, yes, the Endermen do not get pulled in by the Experience Attractor. Uh, that was fun. I had so many of them milling around that it was just ridiculous. And then I had a problem. And I will tell you about this problem here in just a second. Uh, as it turns out, the conversion rate from Experience to Mob Essence is actually quite a bit higher. And without any kind of regulation on the uh, Experience Shower, uh, which I actually had to break... Uh, not just break, but destroy. Uh, but with no regulation on the experience shower, uh, it just kept pouring experience into the world. And then finally, basically, it's so much experience accumulated that uh, everything completely lagged out and just went crazy. It just was not working. So, um, yeah, good thing to, to not do. So, um, since that's not going to work, since the, experience, uh, the tractor obelisk is not going to work, we are going to make something else to get the Enderman moving. We are going to make ourselves some conveyor belts. Uh, I really didn't want to use conveyor belts. Uh, when I originally built that particular setup, um, I specifically didn't use conveyor belts. I mean, I could have back then, but, you know, I, I thought it was prettier to have the, uh, the obelisk standing there all, you know... I don't know. Oh, God, I made too many. Yeah, whatever. Whatever, I don't even care anymore. So, yeah, I had the, the entire world crashed. Uh, actually, the entire world crashed more than once. Um, and I had to try to clean up all the liquid experience that was laying everywhere. It was not fun. So, uh, let's get back over here. By the way, having too many experience orbs loose in the world uh, will cause your world to crash. Uh, well, not necessarily crash per Well, that was just rude. Uh, not necessarily crash per se, but it will cause it to, uh, to lag to the point where you just can't do anything. So, uh, that being the case, let's see. We're going to go ahead and put... You know what? I don't care. 
I'm not taking the chance of that happening again. One barrel, it can't possibly, can't possibly, I say. And having said that, it will probably wind up biting me in the butt. That's okay, so we're gonna, if I had Bedrockium, I would do it that way. It would be a lot easier, but I don't, so. Alright, good. So, that should take care of that. This is down to, why is it, ah, there we go. So yeah, that's down by quite a bit, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and go upstairs. And yeah, we're going to place some of these conveyor belts. Ah, I need to replace this piece right here. That's ah, irritating, but that's okay. Uh, conveyor belts. So when we place these conveyor belts down, it's basically going to forcibly move monsters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this here. And as you can see, um, just this, this is just ugly. And I like the floor looking all pretty and nice, but oh well, what can you do? So we're going to go ahead and place these all here. And have them redirect the monsters to the hole in the ground. Because, you know, hole in the ground. On the plus side, I can probably disable the... Um, uh, the XP... Uh, not the XP, the uh, attractor obelisk, because it's no longer needed. No, not like that. Like that. There we go. So, like I said, I would have preferred to have not had to do it this way, but... Such is life. There we go. Nah. Goodbye, Enderman. Seriously? You're going to stand on the edge? That's just mean. Well, it actually kind of makes sense if you really want to think about it. I need to... Uh... Get off these things. Now that I have this, I don't need the trap doors. Uh, I won't need the trap doors because the monsters will be pushed off the edge by the conveyor belts. And they no longer need to be tricked into walking off the edge thinking that there's a block there. The actual thing is that they're going to be resisting the... Seriously, guys? Uh, the, the monsters will naturally resist the uh, conveyor belts. And therefore, when they get to the edge, they will actually stand on the edge of the actual... Uh, actual piece itself um oh that's gonna be a problem i should have done that first is this showing me everything yes this is showing me everything okay hang on a second here i forgot that i needed to configure this so i could turn the uh thing on and off and why is there a block missing here uh whichever okay so here no, I don't want to see that. I want to see all of this up, whatever. All right, the redstone is going to be a strong signal, and we're going to change the color to green. There we go. That should work nicely. And actually, this needs to not be this way anyway, because otherwise stuff is going to get stuck here. And that's... You know what? It doesn't matter what's under there. I was about to say, that needs to not be that way. It really doesn't matter because... There we go. It doesn't matter what kind of blocks underneath it because its pretty factor is destroyed. Oh well. Whatever. Let's see. This is really disappointing to me. I I'm actually very... Very upset that I'm having to do this this way. I mean, it will still function, and that'll be fine. I'm not even going to save power, because stop pushing me. I do not want to get pushed down in there with Killer Joe. 
So I'm sorry I'm not talking much right now, but yeah, placing these things, if I get tossed in there with Killer Joe, it'll be a very bad day for me. There we go. And there we go. Sweet. All right, so now that we've got that set up, we can go ahead and break this right here. And we can go ahead and place... Wow, I made so many more conveyor belts than I needed to. That's all right. So now we can go ahead and put this one. And this is going to be the south. The south is going to be in out. And the color is going to be green. And we can go ahead and put one of our switches here. Put switch here. I got to have a conduit facade. And I don't have one. Urgh. Whatever. Okay, so the obelisk not working is, is really destroying this as far as a build goes. But uh, that's okay. You know, part of the part of doing this, part of the experience of playing like this is the uh, trial and error. So, you know, this is the way it's going to go. I'm going to take a break for a second real quick, get this all set up and working, and then we'll be back to close up the episode with this functioning. All right? Be right back. All right. Now, got this all fixed, finally, thankfully. Uh, do keep in mind that apparently one barrel of... Uh, one barrel of experience goes a long, long way. Please keep that in mind. Um, apparently, I can now make enough mob essence to... What in the... Nutrient distillation? Why is there nutrient distillation in that drum? That's supposed to be experience. Um, seriously? Oh, because I had the nutrient distillation. Why is it doing that? Because yes, and because no. There. Now it won't do that anymore. Except now I have nutrient distillation in a drum, and whatever. Uh, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Experience drum goes there. Whenever I need more mob essence, I just put it over here, and it goes into this. Uh, keep in mind, don't let yourself get a lot of experience because uh, not experience orbs in the world anyway, because it will cause you problems. All right, so without further ado, we flip this switch to turn that one on. Uh, now we this works this way because we set that channel to green over there, and when we set this one up in behind here, this one is set to channel green as well. So make it a strong signal just because. Uh, so now, the when I flip the switch on, it will turn the um, Enderman spawner off. So they are being spawned, tossed down and through. Killer Joe is making short work of them. And we are getting a ton of Ender Pearls and Enderman heads. I'm not even sure what Enderman heads are used for. Oh, that's right. We use them for the Soul Binder and for the Powered Spawners. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, we're going to have an excessively large amount of those that we don't actually need, but that's all right, too. So, Killer Joe is killing them. We're spawning them, and we have tons of Ender Pearls for next episode. Next episode will be Building Pretty Buildings, uh, take two. Ironically enough, we are in the pretty building that we built last time it was Building Pretty Buildings. So, we will have a hole in our wall. Sure, why not? Um, so anyway, until next time, this is Jeronitis signing off on episode 30, the big three zero. I'm going to stand here for a few minutes and, uh, let it generate ender pearls. It is generating them at an alarming rate, by the way. So that should be awesome. Uh, so until next time, Jeronitis signing off on episode 30. Like me if you like me. Subscribe if you want to see what I get into next. And as always, help spread the gaming.